Hi, and welcome to today's presentation on using PyTop with other tools. I'm Eli, and today I'll be talking to you about the PyTop ecosystem of products and how to connect those with other things you might already have in your classroom. I'm always really excited to talk about this uh, because this is sort of what I'm most interested in when it comes to using our product. Before my life at PyTop, I actually did this through a children's museum, helping teachers understand how to use the products that they have in new and different ways and how to get the most out of the things that they already have in their classroom to extend their lifespan, extend their value, and make sure that they don't just collect dust. Now that I'm at PyTop, I actually think that you know we have one of the best sort of tools for connecting these things together and making new things happen with them. So I, I get really excited to talk about this topic. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to sharing just a little bit about this with you today. Before we get into the third-party tools, what we'll do is we'll talk really briefly about what the PyTop ecosystem includes. Uh, and then we'll discuss why it's useful to connect them to other things. And then finally, we'll explore how you can do that and some of the tools that you can use that you might already have or might be looking at getting. So let's start by quickly defining what we mean when we talk about the PyTop ecosystem of products. This is that ecosystem, and we think of it as an all-in-one solution for teaching and learning computer science. So the PyTop 4 itself is the brain that powers your classroom projects. This is going to be the central component uh, in connecting our tools, but also in connecting those third-party products. And we're going to see how that works in just a little bit. Next is the electronics kit. This is a great series of electronics components that enable the PyTop to do all sorts of things that you can't do with a regular computer. Third is the robotics kit, which allows you to do advanced engineering projects and kind of take the things that you've learned with the PyTop and the electronics kit further and do more complex projects. And then finally is Further, which is our online learning platform. This is where all of our projects live uh, and where we have a lot of other really cool features for use in the classroom as well. So let's look at each of these individually. Let's start with the PyTop 4, since it's sort of the center of everything we do. Uh, this is a modular computer capable of doing all sorts of things that you would expect from a normal computer, you know, browsing the internet, answering email, writing code. All of that can be done from the PyTop, but that's not what makes it special. The PyTop 4 is powered by the Raspberry Pi 4, which is a single board computer used in engineering, education, and hobbyist tinkering. And we've taken that computer and made it convenient and easy to use in a classroom. So just about anything out there that a regular Pi can do, the PyTop can also do. And in most cases, it tends to make those things uh, easier and faster to do with the PyTop because of the extra features that we've added, you know, built-in battery and speaker and things like that tend to make the projects that you might find online for a Raspberry Pi even easier than they would be without the PyTop's, you know, added stuff. Uh, and that's before we even start looking at the other accessories that we've built to make projects easier. So there's stuff that you can do with the PyTop by itself, and then we've built uh, that ecosystem around it that is going to expand that and allow it to do even more. Next up is the Electronics Kit. This is a series of components that connect to the PyTop 4 via a plate that snaps onto the bottom of the PyTop. Here's what that looks like. With the foundation plate attached, the PyTop becomes something other than just a normal computer. With this attached, you can add inputs and outputs like buttons, buzzers, lights, and more. Uh, with this, the PyTop becomes a STEAM learning tool that allows users to experience hands-on physical computing alongside coding. So you can see here, you know, we've attached a light to it. There are some additional sensors there that connect. This allows us to take coding out of the screen and put it on the desk in students' hands so that when they're writing code, it's not to make words appear or shapes appear you know, uh, in a browser or in a coding environment, but it's, a, it's to make things happen in the real world, which we think is a really exciting, valuable part of the learning experience, showing things happening in the real world and giving students real-world applications for the code that they're writing. Next up, uh, to elaborate on that, is our robotics kit, which includes metal build plates and plastic rivets for building advanced creations like you see here. So these are three of the configurations that we've made. Uh, and we have a number of pre-built configurations 
for learning all sorts of concepts related to robotics and artificial intelligence, computer vision, uh, all sorts of things. And this kit can be used for not just our projects, but it can be taken apart and rebuilt to do other things outside of what we've designed as well. Lastly, but certainly not least, is our learning platform Further. Further contains all of our courses, lessons, tutorials, and challenges that help students learn to build, code, and more. Beyond that, it also has a number of classroom management tools that make it easy for teachers to use inside of a classroom setting. Each lesson has instructions on the left with the right side used for either supplemental images, videos, assessment questions, or a coding window. So students can open up further in the browser on their laptop or tablet or whatever, and then they can go through each lesson sending code wirelessly to the PyTOP from the same browser where they're learning. So no swapping back and forth between multiple windows or devices, just read the lesson, run the code, and make things happen right in front of you in the real world. For beginner students who aren't yet ready to tackle Python code, we have block-based coding lessons designed to help you know, get them making projects while they're transitioning to Python code, while they're learning a more advanced programming language. So this is designed to kind of help take the training wheels off and make that easier for beginner students so that they can get on to doing really advanced, exciting projects as they learn and grow. So that's the PyTOP ecosystem in brief. And if you want to learn more details about how all of these tools work, we actually have other webinars that go into greater detail about each of these products. For this webinar, I just wanted to touch briefly on it for anyone who hasn't encountered our stuff before. But what about what the PyTOP can do beyond just working with our accessories? That's what we're here to talk about today. One of my favorite things about our products are their abilities to work with other tools. We've connected the PyTOP to all of these things that you see on the screen and more, either via Bluetooth, USB, or through special ports on the PyTOP that you won't find on a normal computer. But I, I hear what you're saying, why? Why connect the PyTOP to all of this other stuff? And I kind of alluded to it in the intro, but there are a lot of reasons. First of all, uh, to extend the usefulness of your tools. Connecting your Steam tools increases their usefulness and thereby their value. When you connect the PyTOP to Lego, your Lego can do more, and so can your PyTOP. That naturally makes them more useful to you, which means you're going to use them more, which increases their value. Next is increasing understanding of how things work. When students start connecting devices, they have to understand how those devices talk to each other. How does one device output signal to another, for example? How does the other receive that signal as an input? Increasing understanding of a tool increases ownership over that tool and how it's used, and that allows students to make a wider range of choices. By doing these things, by giving them that ownership and that expanded ability, you're increasing their engagement. So once a student learns to connect devices in new ways and unlock their new abilities, that student is more likely to use those tools more often. They'll explore shortcuts and hacks and tricks that can make things easier or better or, lastly, cooler. The wow factor of connecting devices is a kind of natural thing. Think about the game Mousetrap. It's like that. Seeing things connect and talk to each other and being able to understand how they do that, it feels impressive. And so that wow factor is a big part of the reason why you want to connect these things together. So that's a little bit about why you'd even want to do this, but now let's cover the how. And to do that, let's go back to the core of all of this, the PyTOP 4. Let's talk about what makes it tick so that we can understand how to unlock all of that potential. So going back to what we said about it initially, the first thing to keep in mind is that it's just a computer. It's a full functioning, honest to goodness, regular computer. Sure, it's other things as we saw, but at its core, you can plug it into a monitor uh, and a keyboard and mouse and just use it as a desktop. Uh, you could use our portable screen and keyboard to turn it into a laptop. You could connect it wirelessly to your laptop no matter how you use it. It's just a computer. It can do things a regular computer can't, sure, but it's also able to do the things that they can. And that means that any device that's built to talk to a regular computer can probably talk to the PyTOP. Uh, because it has features like USB and Bluetooth and Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and an HDMI port, 
because of these, it can do all sorts of connections that maybe other gadgets, other classroom tools uh, can't do on their own, or it allows it to connect to those devices that rely on these things. Uh, we mentioned that it's built on the Raspberry Pi 4. So this is what that looks like. And the Raspberry Pi 4 is powerful enough to run a Minecraft server or you know host a website. It's capable of running advanced artificial intelligence. And uh, we've put that inside of our product. This computer is incredibly popular all around the world, like I said, with engineers and hobbyists and tinkerers, which mean there are a ton of projects that use it. It has a lot of compatibility, and we can leverage that to make the PyTop uh, more connective and make it sort of the center of an ecosystem of products. So let's start with the easiest one of those connective methods, uh, which is USB. USB ports mean that some classroom tools will be like really, really easy to connect. Computers just think that a Makey Makey is a USB keyboard, for example. Any computer that you plug a Makey Makey into is going to think you've just plugged in a keyboard. And that means that you can plug it into the PyTop and then write code to respond to it, exactly like if you were writing code to respond to a keyboard. So we even have a whole lesson on further about using keyboard inputs to make things happen with our electronics kit. And that means that that would work in the exact same way with a Makey Makey. Here you can see photos from when I used the Makey Makey alongside our electronics kit to build a little detector gadget. This was meant to test whether or not objects would be used as buttons for the Makey Makey, so I would wear this, the, the pie top strapped to my belt with the Makey Makey strapped to the pie top, and I would walk around the room with alligator clips poking things with them. Uh, and whenever something was uh, able to react to the Makey Makey, whenever an object was able to connect to it and send signals, the lights would light up, uh, a buzzer would buzz, and I would get an indication of whether or not that item was usable or not. I also had a button attached to this so that I could turn it on or off. That way I wouldn't accidentally get false readings or get readings when I didn't want them so the buzzer wouldn't be going off all of the time. This type of wearable wouldn't be possible if the Makey Makey was connected to a normal laptop, which is how students would regularly interact with it, right? If you've used a Makey Makey before, you've probably used it in a classroom where kids are taking their laptop, plugging the Makey Makey into it, and then doing work at their desk. But making something mobile, getting up and being able to move around with it, is not as easy because of those laptops. You'd have to put them in a backpack or carry them around, and they're, they're more cumbersome. With this, the Pi Top can be, like I said, strapped to your belt, put on a backpack strap or in a purse. Uh, it can be carried in a ton of different ways, or even just in you know the palm of your hand, and that opens up the design possibilities, which allows students to make things and try things that they wouldn't otherwise. So just by changing the form factor, we've opened up the door to new things that can be designed and built, and we've really expanded uh, sort of the limits of what students can do with this tool that they have in the classroom. The Makey Makey team learned about this, and they took it a step further. They made interactive lab coats that they could wear around at a convention. And this was all possible only because of, you know, the ability to take two discrete devices and figure out how they interact with each other. You know, having a portable computer with its own battery that you can put in your pocket changes the way that you're able to use the Makey Makey, and now suddenly you're making things that you might not have otherwise. Similar things can be done with certain little bits. Uh, any little bit that can talk to a computer over USB, they have an Arduino bit, they have a Makey Makey bit, uh, they have a few different ones that can talk to computers, and that means they can talk to the PyTop. So we can use those to send signals back and forth in the exact same way as we would with a Makey Makey. So here you can see I've connected bits uh, to their Makey Makey bit and then connected that to the PyTop. So now we have the PyTop reading makey we, reading makey makey inputs connected to little bits to create signals so i could put a little bits button or a little bits sensor or knob something like that uh, on the makey makey bit or on an arduino bit run that into the pi top and make new things happen so now i'm able to take these really simple tools and create something way more elaborate out of them and change the way that they're being used which is really exciting uh, going one step further, we can we can sidestep using USB, and we can take some pretty advanced sensors from companies like Vernier that can connect over Bluetooth. So this is the exact same principle as what we would do with something like the Makey Makey, but it's way more advanced. Uh, what you see here is actually their uh, their hand 
dynamometer. I can never remember how to pronounce that. Uh, and this is basically like a really advanced version of the Nintendo Wii Mote from the Wii console back in the day, if you remember that. Uh, this is a device that detects movement and then can send that data over Bluetooth to a computer. Uh, and because it can connect over Bluetooth and the PyTop has Bluetooth, we're able to leverage that. So we can see that here in this video that we made. This is actually that sensor being used to send signal to the PyTop to control our robotics kit. So we were able to drive our robot around using their hand motion sensor. Uh, and all of this is possible just because of the fact that the Vernier sensors use Python and use Bluetooth, so we're able to connect those. So that's a pretty advanced thing that can be done, but even something as simple as microbit can send information over Bluetooth. And it also has a gyroscope, which means that you could do something similar with the microbit to what we just showed with the Vernier sensor. Uh, microbit can also communicate over USB, which means that we could program it from the PyTop and have the two talk to each other over a USB cable, just like the Makey Makey. I actually think my favorite thing to use the microbit for, though, comes with those little brass pads on the bottom. Uh, just like a Makey Makey, these can be connected with alligator clips, which leads uh, to all sorts of, you know, different types of inputs and outputs. We can use those little brass pads with the last form of connectivity that I want to talk about, which is uh, GPIO pins. So rather than using Bluetooth or USB, we can connect a, a micro bit over these pins right here on the PyTop. These uh, can be plugged in with jumper wires, so you can take jumper cables, plug those into the ports, and then connect them to things like a micro bit to send signals back and forth. This, that's like the you know simplified version of how to do this, but it can also get incredibly advanced. Like we could use an Arduino or really any microcontroller. So an Arduino Uno, the Raspberry Pi Pico, an Adafruit Circuit Playground, and so on. There are tons of these microcontrollers uh, that have all sorts of projects built around them online, and all of these can be integrated with the PyTop. So here you can see that I've got an Arduino setup where the PyTop is actually powering it, sending code to it, running it, and then information can be sent back and forth between those. So I could hook up sensors to the Arduino, have it take readings off of those sensors, feed those into the PyTop, and then log them or use them in different ways. So you can do a lot of stuff once you start getting into using these GPIO pins that are available on the top of the PyTop. This is more advanced and probably for you know older students, but it is a really cool thing to have in those situations because the Raspberry Pi Foundation themselves make great use of the GPIO pins, and there are a ton of third-party companies that have all sorts of accessories for them. Here you can actually see uh, what's called a unicorn hat. And this is an LED matrix designed for the Raspberry Pi. And because we're powered by the Raspberry Pi and we can use most hats that they have, uh, hats are the, the things that they put on top of the Pi, you can see here that this just works. So we can connect this and, uh, and have an additional display on top of the Pi top that we can control with code from further. Uh, we can also sort of skip the GPIO pins entirely and use additional sensors from other companies using our own tools. Here you see Grove sensors. Grove sensors are from a company called Seed Studios, and they make little electronics bits that are similar to what we have in our electronics kit, and they can even be used in the exact same way. So you can see these sensors are plugged into our foundation plate, so they use the exact same ports as our own sensors. So what you can see here are sensors that are displaying the ambient temperature uh, of the area around them. They're displaying that information on the screen, and whenever it hits a certain temperature, we can turn that fan on and off and actually rotate it uh, like you would you know, if you had a, a fan set up in your room. So we can take their sensors and build all sorts of projects beyond what we have on further, beyond our own designs, and this is a great way if you have students who are particularly advanced or particularly interested in certain topics to go, you know, well beyond the things that we've already written content on. They could start with our stuff, they could learn how to use these types of tools, and then they could expand on that with their own ideas and bring in different interests and bring in different capabilities because of the openness of the platform. So all of the things that we've talked about here are really only scratching the surface of what's possible. And that's one of my favorite things about working with the PyTop and getting to work with all of these products. 
I truly think that we've built an amazing ecosystem of tools for getting students started with computer science, coding, and making, but I also love and get energized by the fact that there is so much beyond what we have made that is also available out there. So we are going to continue to create content uh, to help people learn and grow, but for students who want to move you know, faster than us or who are already at such an advanced level that maybe they're beyond what we have in further, you know, university level students even can take this product and connect things to it uh, beyond what we have in our library. Uh, and the ability to do that, I think, is so cool. I always encourage teachers when I'm talking to them to look for creative ways to breathe new life into the products and tools that they have in their classrooms. And I think that one of the best ways to do that is by discovering how you can connect things to each other. And PyTop is a great tool to make your classroom equipment stick together, to connect Lego and Makey Makey and Micro Bits and Little Bits and Arduino and all of these things. You can actually make them start talking to one another uh, if you have students who are excited and energized about learning how to make those connections happen. And it's something that we get really excited about and definitely want to support. And if you're interested in figuring out ways to do that, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, through our website so that we can help you figure out those possibilities and so that we can explore new products and new ways to connect things. So that is uh, using the PyTop with other products in a nutshell. That's the basic idea of how to do this. You can take the PyTop ecosystem of products and because of the sort of open nature of the device and the various ways that it can connect, because of the fact that other devices can treat it as a regular computer, you should be able to take things that you already have, plug them in, connect them over Bluetooth or GPIO pins or USB, and make new things happen with them. Uh, it's a really exciting thing and I definitely encourage you to look into it. Maybe you have some of the things that we've showed here today or that we've talked about. Like I said, if you have other devices that you're not sure about, please reach out to us. And other than that, we will see you in the next webinar. Thanks.